Now I know that lots of you sat at home watching right now are either Swedish yourself or you've been watching me for some time. And either way, you probably think that you've got a pretty good idea about Sweden and what it's like. But as you guys know by now, I'm always one who's looking to push the envelope. I wanna make sure that the minutes that you're about to invest in this video are worth your while. I want you to come away either surprised, entertained, or learning something new. And today is absolutely no exception at all. As you can tell from the title of this video, today I'm gonna to be introducing five things that you probably haven't heard before about Sweden. And I know that this is quite the challenge because you guys are a clever bunch, so the chances are, at least some of you have heard of one or two of these facts before. But by the end of this video, I'm gonna try and make sure that you all come away with something that you definitely had never heard before about Sweden. And I want you guys to be honest at the end, so make sure you drop a comment down below and tell me which of these five things you had never heard of before. It's a tough ask, but I think I'm up to the challenge. So here are five things that you've probably not heard about Sweden before. Number one, per capita, Sweden has the most McDonald's restaurants in Europe. Yes, when you ask somebody what comes to mind when they think of the country Sweden, I'm pretty convinced that the Golden Arches isn't something that they're likely to say. But shockingly, Sweden has a lot of McDonald's restaurants. In fact, I'm pretty sure that if you dug into the data, you would find out that there is only one other country that has more McDonald's restaurants in the world per capita than Sweden, and that's the USA. So on that basis, it really shouldn't come as any surprise at all that McDonald's has taken full advantage of this in their marketing campaigns. In fact, on several occasions, they have referred to themselves as Sweden's favorite restaurant chain. And I'll leave it up to you guys to decide whether that title is deservedly earned or not. But that said, you can't avoid that McDonald's now hires over 12,000 people here in Sweden. So it's definitely got its footprint here. And if we're being fair here, maybe this fact isn't as surprising as it first sounds. Because after all, when we're talking about per capita, we're talking about per person. And there's of course not a lot of people here in Sweden. So you don't actually need that many restaurants to have a really high per capita ratio. Talking of Sweden cities, my second fact takes us right to the heart of Stockholm. Yes, because all of the way back in 2010, Stockholm set a bit of an unlikely precedent for what happens if you are fined for speeding in the city. So if you were caught putting your foot a little bit too hard on the gas in Stockholm city, they would fine you, but instead of that money going back towards the transport authorities, they set up this innovative fund where all of the money was collected together, and at the end of the year, somebody that didn't speed would get that money in a lottery. Yes, because all you had to do to be entered into the draw was to drive at or below the speed limit throughout the year, and then at the end of the year, the winner was presented with all of the fine money. And if I'm being honest with you, it sounds like the campaign had the desired effect because the average speed in Stockholm reduced by seven kilometers an hour from 32 to 25 kilometers an hour. What I've been unable to verify is whether you can only get an entry once or it was every time you drove at or below the speed limit in the city. Because I've got this really funny image in my head of people driving all the way up to Stockholm from Gothenburg or Malmö just to drive slower than they should to try and earn themselves some free cash. The other thing that I've been unable to verify is whether this campaign still exists or not because I know it was started in 2010 but I can't find any official end date. So if you know the details, if you live in Stockholm yourself, let us know in the comments down below, is it still possible to earn money by abiding by the law in Stockholm? And sticking with the theme of Swedish innovation, the third thing on my list of things that you didn't know about Sweden before is it's actually this country that we've got to thank for the fact that I know that it's 23 degrees outside today. Yes, because did you know that it was actually a Swedish astronomer by the name of Anders Celsius, who we have to thank for the fact that we have a centigrade system today. He was the guy that invented it. But he was clearly quite a restless man because not only did he go and create the self system, but he even created the thermometer that we use to measure it. So next time you surf to your weather app to check out what the conditions are like outside, just know that it's Anders Celsius that you have to thank for the fact you know if you need a jumper or not. Okay, maybe I am getting a little bit happy-go-lucky with the credit that I'm handing out right about now, because while he did invent the Celsius system, he of course isn't responsible for weather forecasting, so maybe there's a couple of other people we have to thank for that. But as a consolation, how about I throw in an extra thing for you guys right now? Did you know that Sweden was the first country in the world to adopt standardized time? And they did so to make sure that it was a little bit easier for people that wanted to use the train network because it was impossible to know when your train was gonna come. And I mean, that's something we can all be thankful for today because I mean, trains are unreliable enough as it is, let alone without a timetable. <laughs> the fourth thing that you probably didn't know about Sweden before today is that one of its kings went on to become a pirate. Yes, it probably sounds like I'm making them up by this point. This literally sounds like something out of a fairy tale, but I assure you this is 100% true. Back in the 1400s, one of the kings was forced off the throne and went on to become a pirate. So the story goes that all the way back in 1439, Eric XIII, or Eric of Pommern as he was also commonly known, was forced to leave the throne. He was deposed by a new king, and that forced him to flee all the way to Gotland, where he then became a pirate for the next 10 years. Yes, research shows that he spent the next 10 
years of his life traveling around the Baltic Sea looking for Davy Jones' locker. No word of a lie. Okay, maybe there was a tiny white lie at the end there, but the part about him spending 10 years sailing over the seas as a pirate is entirely true. Come to think about it, the more that we dig into this tale, the more that I think I'm hearing the story for a new Netflix original. So Netflix, if you wanna get in touch, I'll sort you out. And that brings me nicely on to the fifth and final thing that I'm gonna be sharing today that you've probably never heard about Sweden before. Yes, because while you're probably familiar with Swedish music, you've probably heard of ABBA before, or Robin, or Zara Larsson, one thing you might not know is that Sweden is actually the world's third biggest music exporter. Yes, because officially, if you look at the data, Sweden is only behind the UK and the USA for the amount of music they export each year. And don't be fooled here, we're not just talking about the artists and the singers, we're talking about all of the DJs, all of the songwriters, we're talking about all of the music producers, Sweden is everywhere in the music world. And if you don't believe me, all you need to do is surf across to Genius Lyrics, scroll down, look at who's in the songwriting credits, and nine times out of ten, I guarantee you, there's going to be a Swedish name there. Yes, I mean, how could we forget Max Martin, Avicii, Alesso, Swedish House Mafia, the list goes on, these guys are all over music. Not to forget the Ingrossos, it's really incredible when you come to think about it, because everywhere you look in music, wherever you are in the world, all you need to do is turn a corner and you're going to find a Swede. It's incredible how musical these people are, and I'm wondering if it has something to do with how rhythmic the language is. And while it's not something that I know a lot about, something that I absolutely can't finish this video about mentioning today is that Swedes also have a huge footprint where it comes to rock music. I'm sure the Swedes of you out there will comment down below and let anyone that's interested know even more about the involvement that the Swedes have there too. But I guess that my message for you guys today is that if you like a song, there's probably a Swede involved somewhere. And with that, we've reached the end of another video, you guys. I hope you've come away learning something new today. I hope I succeeded in my challenge. You guys have got to let me know down in the comments below. Was there something that I've talked about today that you didn't know about Sweden? If by some chance you had heard all of these before, please deposit a new one down in the comments below, something else that maybe you don't think that people would know about Sweden, because I for one would love to read them, and I'm sure there's others of you out there that would also be interested to learn something new. So let me know down in the comments below, and then once you're done doing that, if you haven't liked this video yet, it'd be awesome if you could. Subscribe as well, because I have new videos twice a week. Click that bell so you're the first to know when they come out. Thank you for all of the support. Thank you for watching as always, and I will see you guys later this week for another video. But until then, thanks for watching, and goodbye, you guys.